You haven't slept at all. Are you sure you're okay? This place seems even more perilous than we first thought. Don't worry about me. Staying focused under pressure for as long as it takes is my specialty. Now, if I'm not mistaken, looks like you've got some new ideas. <laughs> How could he tell? It's my job to keep tabs on people. I figured as much. They're just preliminary ideas at this point, but I haven't completely thought them through yet. I'll tell you more once my ideas have taken shape. Sure. Sounds good. I also have some ideas of my own. I'll fill you in after I've confirmed some things. <laughs> you think so? As they say, two heads are always better than one. hard to believe what we've encountered. Well, I suppose there's no use hiding it anymore now that everyone's seen it. What you all saw really was my biggest fear. I never want to become a Shrine Maiden. Who could tolerate such a boring life? After these last few years with the Arataki Gang, I suppose you could say I've seen it all. It's taken every skill in my arsenal to constantly clean up the messes they make. Though the list of annoying things to deal with is practically endless, I am totally free in the Arataki Gang. Strolling around the streets, roasting lavender melons with friends in the open country... I know it sounds pretty silly, but that's the life that I want. Just don't laugh at me, okay? Otherwise, you might find yourself on the receiving end of a good beating. You don't look very well, at least not like when we just arrived. Are you troubled by what you saw behind the door? Listen to me. The most important thing is always the choices you have in front of you. Get some rest before you gather the courage to take your next step. Once you've chosen the path to take, don't hesitate. You must believe in your decision. Ushi, you sure you can't find a way back to that door again? Mm. Ah, perfect timing! I was just having a chat with Ushi about that. You know what? I can handle those mean people behind the door throwing beans at me, but causing trouble for you? Nah, uh That ain't gonna fly with this guy. Mm -hmm. What? There's nothing we can do? Listen here, Beefcake. You shouldn't give up so easily. Can't you have one last look for it? If you really can't find it, we'll just have to find another door. With any luck, one that connects to the outside world. Hmm? You feel me? Yep, that's the big question. Gotta be honest, I have a no idea. Oh, come on, don't get mad at me. I'm just being real here. I did think about just using my Oni super strength to dig our way out, but the rocks here are even tougher than prison walls. The rocks didn't even budge when Ushi charged him. It's pretty obvious this place is meant to keep us in here. The only thing I can do now is, uh, well... Take care of this exhausted little lavender melon. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're helping too, Ushi. By the way, Traveler, if you have a moment, could you do me a favor? I'd like to discuss something with you. Please, come meet me over there. Thanks for coming to speak with me, Traveler. I've been thinking about this place. Since we still don't know just what kind of danger we're up against, we can't afford to delay any longer. We have to find the Conqueror of Demons as soon as possible. Don't you think it's a strange coincidence that as soon as you told us about the Conqueror of Demons, we heard his voice in that place? It almost seems deliberate. 
as if something was trying to convince us that the Conqueror of Demons was there in order to lure us into the unknown. I have a theory, but I can't tell the others just yet. I don't want anyone to panic. Judging from the Conqueror of Demons' reactions, I think that he was somewhere else, but his voice and image were projected to our location. Is it possible that we've entered into a chaotic space? We're seeing things in people that shouldn't be here, even ghosts. And we don't feel hungry because the state of our bodies is suspended. It's as if time itself has stopped for us. If that's true, it means we've entered into a place where normal logic doesn't apply. When you put it all together, everything points towards one possibility. This is a place where time and space are thrown into chaos. And yet, if it's truly chaotic, how did we find our friend's voice even when we had no idea where he was? It doesn't make any sense. Unless this space wanted us to hear it. Which brings me to my next point. I also have a theory about our encounter with the Conqueror of Demons earlier. I submit that we didn't actually see the Conqueror of Demons. He was somewhere else. But his status was transmitted to us through a, some kind of mind-bending spatial alteration. Traveler, you said you saw the Abyss in that room, didn't you? At first glance, that door may seem like a prank. It shows you whatever you're afraid of, but if it manages to lure you inside, there's no way of knowing what might be in there. One minute, it's playing a joke to get you to lower your guard. The next, the danger is real, and it's trapped you. This space is a powerful opponent. It wants to use our minds against us. But I'm not gonna sit here and do nothing. Do you remember that small spatial rift next to the dissolving ground? It felt like spatial magic, but it seemed much more powerful than usual. When we saw that illusion of the Conqueror of Demons, it seemed like he wasn't expecting our spaces to intersect at all, and was even more surprised that we could hear and see him. I think that this space purposefully transmitted the Conqueror of Demons' voice to lure us into a trap. But I also think it didn't count on that spatial rift happening. In other words, the fact that we saw and spoke with the Conqueror of Demons was never part of its plan. Yes. Also, I had a good look around after coming back. I have a feeling that these chaotic spaces are constantly intersecting with each other, meaning that anything is possible. I think this gives us an opportunity. If the space creates phenomena meant to deceive us based on our imaginations, then we have to keep imagining, Traveler. If we try to stay calm and listen carefully, maybe, just maybe, we'll hear the Conqueror of Demon's voice again. Can you feel that? Let me see. I think it's here. And... break! <sighs> I secretly learned Yelan's illusion-breaking method without her knowing. <laughs> really didn't expect that to work. The sound came from behind this illusion. Let's go in and take a look. we try to stay calm and listen carefully, maybe, just maybe, we'll hear the Conqueror of Demons' voice again. It's getting clearer! And now, this is the chasm. What did British go through here? Just in that battle fought years ago. What is he doing here? The one I met. Is that the prime Aksha?
The voice is much clearer now. We're close. Conqueror of Demons, can you hear me? It's Yenfei. The Traveler and I are trying to find you. Uh, traveler? Yenfei? It worked. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm fine. Listen to me. It's chaotic here. We may not be in the same space, but sometimes the sound can get through, which means these separate spaces intersect from time to time. Everything is chaotic here. No. The darkness that sullies my soul is harmful to mortals. Right now, we have more dangerous things to worry about than that. This space is using our urge to find you to lure us into traps. Without you here with us, our search for you could very well lead us into danger. So, you're in danger too? There was no need for you to search for me. But we're worried about you. And earlier, the Traveler was tricked into entering a dangerous place. <sighs> How do we meet? Conqueror of Demons, can you find out where our voices are coming from? Find the spot where our voices are the clearest and try... something there. It might work. I see. The spaces may intersect amidst the chaos. By try something, do you mean... Hurry! If we miss this chance, we might not get another one. Hmm. Stand back! Let's get him back to the camp. <sighs> now we can avoid getting split up. A lot's happened here, but this wasn't just for our own safety. You're injured. We can't just leave you alone. It's just a flesh wound. <sighs> I am fine. I shouldn't let myself be a burden to you. You're not a burden. Don't think that for one second. We need you, all of us. For our sake, please, stay here, please. Fine. As you wish. You're injured. Get some rest. Everything else can wait. <sighs> All right. As expected, something strange is going on here. Oh, Traveler? You're both here. Great. I want to talk to you. I also felt that the space was targeting us. 
but Yenfei managed to exploit its weakness. <laughs> Leave it to Yenfei to find a loophole. Based on what just happened, we can now confirm our suspicions that space and time function chaotically here. In addition, we must stay vigilant to avoid the traps set for us by this place. Now that we've found the Conqueror of Demons, the next thing we need to do is find a way out. I went back to the Domain again just now. Although I couldn't find a new route, it wasn't a completely fruitless trip. My clan has practiced magic for generations, and has created some catalysts that only we know how to use. I recognized something like one of those catalysts in the Domain. Unfortunately, it disappeared as soon as I approached it. I think so, but it's hard to distinguish between reality and illusion here. I can't be sure. Also, I am the only one out of all of us who could know what it would look like. To me, that confirms that this place really is reading our minds. Just like with that door. It's like it's alive, and testing us. By reading our minds and showing us what we want, it creates the reality that we want to be true. Everything it does is either to get us to lower our guard, or to wear us down. If that's the case, it can only have one goal. To trap us here until we die. What else could it be? We should prepare for the worst, but we mustn't give up. I've always known there were secrets hidden in the chasm, but even the Qixing have never heard about anything like this. Yelon, when we first ran into you, you said you had something to do. What were you referring to? <sighs> I... was looking for the truth behind the monster invasion from Conria. <sighs> Please keep everything I'm about to say to yourselves. No one else can know. Otherwise... We got it. <sighs> Five hundred years ago, a wave of dark beasts from Conria attacked the Seven Nations of Tevat. Naturally, Liyue was also affected. Under Rex Lapis's command, the Millilith fought hard to hold the front line near the chasm. But these were vicious beasts. And this was the most desperate battle Liyue had ever faced. At a critical moment, someone distracted the monsters and led them away. Just when all hope seemed lost, the tide turned. The Liyue army eventually won the war. But there were many who never returned. Two of my ancestors took part in that war. And the one who made it back went insane. Everything about it was strange. The current generation of Qixing knows very little about these events, and very few came back from the chasm alive. Finding out the truth has been a waiting game. The day the chasm was unsealed, I put in a request to be transferred here, so I could finally learn the truth of what happened back then. But this place we've ended up in, and the possibilities we're facing, it's all far more terrifying than I'd imagined. <sighs> we can't give up. Right now, our number one priority has to be getting out of here alive. Are you all right? You've suddenly gone quiet. It's not like you at all. Shh. We'll talk later. I'm just processing all the existing clues we have. Maybe the key to our escape is hidden in some detail I've overlooked? I have to go over everything again. All right. Well... Oh, don't worry. I won't write down anything that you told us about. No, I meant if you're going to analyze the facts, count me in.
You don't look well. I guess things still haven't improved. It's okay. You don't have to go into all the details. <sighs> Sometimes I really envy the boss. Ushi, looks like our little lavender melon has fallen asleep, huh? Do you think she's dreaming? Man, she looks wiped out. It's kind of hard to see her like this. I mean, most of the time she never shuts up. Aw, poor thing. And that little dude looks done in too. I'm kind of worried about him. Oh, I sleep like this when I'm in jail. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I do slumber like a king. Traveler, when did you get here? She's never seen a crazy place like this before. Who would have thought the best guide in all of Tevet could end up so out of their depth? <laughs> Traveler, it looks like the Conqueror of Demons is awake. I'm fine. Don't worry. Karma I carry is dangerous to humans. Keep your distance. Well, I have Adepti blood in me, so I wouldn't worry too much. Even so. What happened while Paimon was sleeping? How did Xiao get here? With a little help, I was able to find my way here. Conqueror of Demons, could you tell us what happened before he joined us? No need to be so formal. Just call me Shell. Oh, sure. <sighs> it was a senseless battle. I came here looking for someone, but when I found them, they weren't anything like how I expected. Madam Ping says that you usually base yourself at Wang Shuin to guard the main road through Dihua Marsh. It's unusual for you to go looking for someone yourself. Are they an Adeptus? <sighs> I'm looking for a Yaksha called Bosatius. Bosatius? Is that one of the five Yakshas, like you? I thought that you were the only one left. Aren't the other four... gone from the world? You could say that. But Bosatius's body is the only one that was never found. Yakshas deal with God's remains all the time, and we become tainted by karma. Over time, it inevitably drives us to madness. The last time I saw Bosatius, it was the day he lost his mind. 
He left. No one knew where he went, and I never heard from him again. But Bosatius was the eldest of us. He once told us, as Yakshas we will experience countless wars. Whether we live or die, we must promise to take care of each other, and know each other's fate to the very end. Did he forget his promise because he lost his sanity? It's possible, but I did not. I am the sole survivor, so it is my duty to find out the fates of the others. What made you come to the chasm? Did you hear something about Bosatius being here? Did you know that 500 years ago, the beasts of Conria invaded the chasm? That war lasted a long time. It is said that in the midst of the battle, a brave Yaksha was seen putting up a heroic fight. But no one knew the Yaksha's name. But there were many more than five Yakshas in total, so there's no guarantee it was Bosatius. Wow. But you must think it was probably him if you came here to investigate, right? I am by no means certain, and I didn't have any other clues except for this one. But Bosatius was proud. If he had taken part in that war, he would have announced his name. So at first, I thought the nameless Yaksha couldn't be him. <clears throat> Wait. So it was Bosatius you were fighting with? Did he injure you? Yes. No way! The invasion of monsters from Conria, the battle in the chasm, and Yelon's ancestor. I have a feeling that somehow these are all connected. Life is full of coincidences, but this is too much of a coincidence. Could this all be related to the fantastic compass mentioned in the will, too? What will? Oh, right. I came here because of a will. Maybe it's not something you've come across much before, but both mortals and Adepti sometimes write out their final wishes so somebody else will carry them out after they've passed. It's known as a last will and testament. And this can be done at any time? Whoa! You wanna write a will? Now? <sighs> it was no accident that you saw my illusion that day. This place used your desire to find me to create a trap that you would willingly walk into. Pure deception is easy to spot, but the truth laced with lies can be a fatal combination. What you heard were really things that I said. It made sure you heard my real voice to create panic. This one-way communication was the bait. If we hadn't managed to get in touch through the spatial rift, we may well have lost someone by now. Rather than murdering in cold blood, this space seems more intent on consuming souls. How is this even possible? Our opponent is very clever. It is not safe to stay here. Everyone, whether I accomplish what I came here to do or not, I must find a way to get you out safely. Hmm. I rejoin to warn you that it's extremely dangerous here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. But how do you know? You might become a shadow of your former self, wandering the underground like a lost soul. Hmm. Sounds like you saw them too. Yelon, you're back! I've been back a while. I was listening to the conversation. I've seen some strange things here too. Objects that shouldn't be here. Strange figures appearing, then vanishing. I don't think any of it is real. So they're just illusions? At first I had the same thought. But it's not that simple. There may come a day when these illusions become real and attack you. From what you were saying a moment ago, it sounds like you know a way out of here. I can't say for sure. It's just a guess. As Yanfei said, this space is chaotic and unstable, but it has its weaknesses. By attacking the point where both spaces connect, 
I was able to create a rift and move from one to the other. So, if I use all the energy I have, I may be able to tear a passage out of this chaotic space. Really? So powerful attacks can affect the space itself. I had wondered if that was a possibility. Whoa, 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 whoa. But what do you mean by all the energy you have? I mean, it will take everything I've got. Wait a minute! When you said you were gonna get us out safely, you mean you're gonna stay here? You can't be serious. <sighs> I saw Bosatius underground. That's when I realized the horror of this place. A single blast can only create a very small opening. To send you back to the outside world, I may need to continuously channel power in order to keep the tunnel open. I know how to fight to the bitter end. I can do this. No. No way. Even if what you're saying is true, I can't agree to this. Hi, Mom, neither! It's not much of an escape plan if we gotta leave someone behind! It's only a good or bad plan if there are other options to compare it to. But that's not the situation we're in right now. I doubt you'd still be stuck here if anyone had a better idea. B but can you be certain that your plan will work? I cannot. What is wrong with you? You can't bet your life on something if you don't even know it's gonna work! It's not worth it! To conclude, I'm not agreeing to this plan. What if I told you, this is my last will? <gasps> you? <sighs> That's your strategy, huh? No offense, but we have no guarantee this plan of yours will succeed. Or even that it's safe. You said it yourself. Yakshas pose a danger to humans. You really expect us to accept your self-righteous plan just because you say so? The battlefield is a treacherous place. Every opportunity you take, you put everything on the line for. If you fear sacrifice and failure, you can never be victorious. I've been in my fair share of treacherous battles. So I know full well that you never bring up extreme measures like this until the very, very end. <laughs> you say these things in the hope that we will understand and accept them. But if you don't even know that your self-sacrifice is going to pay off, all you're doing is hurting morale. Besides, if you were really so determined to end it all, you wouldn't have given us the opportunity to share our opinions. You think you're oh so cold and ruthless, but I'm not buying it. And anyway, losing one of us so the rest can escape? <laughs> Some victory that is. Yelon, don't be so harsh. <sighs> Point is, it's not time for drastic measures yet. It's possible there's a hidden passage leading to the exit that we just haven't discovered. What if there isn't? Or if we don't find it? And in the end, I'm so weak that I don't have the strength left to sacrifice myself. What do you propose we do then? As things stand, there's no difference between sacrificing you and trying to find another way out, in terms of the likelihood of success. If we can't say that one strategy is better than the other, we certainly shouldn't be rushing into a risky course of action. Did someone say a strong enough strike can break us out of this place? Yeah, that's right, I heard ya. No one's staying behind to let anyone else out, alright? Enough talk, it's time for action! Come on, whatever you are! Let's see how long you manage to keep us trapped in here after I'm finished with you! Uh, easy now. Have a taste of this! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> 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 
<sighs> okay, so I didn't tear the whole place down. <coughs> but check it out, new path. <laughs> if you need a hero, I'm the man for the job. Ito! Should have seen this coming. Why do you always have to do things like this? Shinobu. What happened to Ito? Did he pass out? <clears throat> the boss used up all his strength in one punch. Maybe that's the reason he managed to tear open a passage. <clears throat> Let me see if there's any way I can stabilize it. He did this because he heard us arguing, right? <sighs> the thing with Boss is, he just can't stand conflict between teammates. Whenever we get into an argument in the Arataki Gang, he always goes and does something shocking to calm everyone down. <sighs> Today, he's done it again. He may not have known you for very long, but when he said he sees everyone as part of the same team, he truly means that. Mm. Another thing with Boss is, he hates it when other people sacrifice themselves, but he always seems to end up doing it himself. That said, there's a slight distinction to be made with him. When he does things like this, he doesn't really think he's sacrificing himself, because he genuinely believes that he's strong enough to defeat any obstacle he's facing. Giant ego alert! And wasn't he just doing the same thing Xiao suggested? <sighs> so stupid. The boss is hardly open to persuasion. Besides, he always acts without thinking. There's no doubt that he really thought he was about to solve everything in one hit. Ugh, it's not just him either. The other guys in the Arataki gang are more or less the same. That's why they need someone like me to clean up after them. I couldn't stop him if I tried, so I might as well just let him do his thing. Besides, often his harebrained intuition is surprisingly on point. We might punch our way out of here yet. Uh, Ito, please tell Paimon you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't be. You have nothing to apologize for. Both you and Yelan made some very good points. Still, if this was an Arataki gang issue and you were one of our members, I have to say I'd side with Yelan on this one. The boss definitely wasn't sacrificing himself. He firmly believed that we'd be able to find a way out through the passage he opened up, and he's certainly not expecting to be left behind. Everyone's important. We have to support each other if we're going to get out of here. Your survival is of huge importance to some people. Uh, no, to a whole lot of people. Aww, Shinobu. Everyone? Let's all do our best to try and find a way out. There's still a chance. I'm sure we can escape. Leave the boss to me. Don't worry. <sighs> Everyone, it seems this passage doesn't lead to the outside world, but deeper inside. What the? So Ito's efforts were in vain? No, it's still worth exploring. I'll go and take a look first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm with you. Uh, what? So far, I still haven't found the thing I came looking for. That magical device, remember? If this domain has the power to project our imaginations or the things we're searching for into reality, well, maybe I can use that to my advantage to track it down. She keeps telling us to keep going. If it's a magical device, it must be super powerful. Well, I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a try. I will find a way. Let him go. But if you're planning on going into that domain too, then come with me. After all, I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> we'll be safer if we team up. By the way, um, you and Xiao seem pretty close, huh? 
Yelon got a bit worked up just now, so I just wanted to apologize on her behalf. I have to say, though, if Yelon hadn't spoken out like she did, I'm not sure she would have gotten through to him. Also, self-sacrifice is something Yelon feels strongly about. She tried to stop whoever it was. From what I know, she's lost comrades in the line of duty before, and then was rescued herself. Maybe being a survivor is what makes her so against seeing other people sacrifice themselves. How can things ever be the same again, knowing that your life was saved when others weren't? In a way, salvation can also be a burden. If I were her, I'm not sure I would have done anything different. Oh, wait, one second. I'll be right there. Yeah! <sighs> right, that's much safer. Since Ito can't fight right now, I've cast a spell to protect you guys. Thank you, Senpai. Please, be careful. We will. Same to you. Alright, Traveler, let's go.